Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You're on the Calvary Devotionals with George Truly. Pastor Jose of Calvary Hawthorne. Happy Thursday. Excited to be on with you again this morning. As we reflect and expound upon the word of God. As we're approaching, fastly approaching Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Um, but you know what's more important than it being Thursday, so let's go. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for being amazing. You are awesome. You are wonderful. You are incredible. You are faithful. You are consistent. You are mighty God. You're good. Despite what goes on or happens in our life, nothing changes who you are. You are the great I am. And you alone deserve all of our worship, our honor, and our praise forevermore. Father, my prayer is that you illuminate our understanding to help us understand your love even greater. That we would have a greater revelation of your love towards us. That we might know, know you in a more intimate way. And that we might serve you more faithfully. And we ask these and other blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Um, I was, it's a really great verse today, today. It reminded me to let everyone know that tomorrow being Good Friday, and I'll try to remember to announce this again at the conclusion of this broadcast. Uh, we have Good Friday service at Calvary Hawthorne tomorrow at 6.30, we will have foot washing. 6.30, we will have foot washing. And then at 7 p.m. sharp, we will start our Good Friday Seven Last Sayings of Jesus service. We'll be going over the last seven statements Christ made as he was paying the price for humanity. So those that can, you want to join us tomorrow, it's going to be awesome. This foot washing service starts at 6.30 where we will be explaining foot washing and administering foot washing, starting with me. We will not only uh, engage in that practice, but more importantly, explain the purpose behind that practice as it relates to Jesus's example. relates to Jesus' example when he did it. That we might comprehend the message he was trying to get over. 
um, I was 7 p.m., seven last sayings service will be streamed live. So if you're unable to attend in person, you can still join us online for that service. Okay, let me own it. There you go. God bless you. God bless you. So today, as we're approaching Resurrection Sunday, a very familiar passage of scripture came in my spirit this morning, Just meditating after listening to the verse of the day, meditating on a verse that I've known since I was a little bitty boy. I memorized this verse as a very, very young lad. And it's very familiar, probably one of the most familiar verses in Christian. But that's what I want to share today. Familiar passage of scripture found in St. John chapter number three, verse number 16. John 3 and 16 simply reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The greatest revelation you can have that will affect your life in a profound way in regards to your walk with God is the revelation of how much he truly loves you. Believe it or not, this is the most powerful revelation you can have as a son or daughter of God. It's to fully know how much he truly loves you. It will change your entire life. And believe it or not, Throughout Christian, many people don't really fathom, don't fully comprehend the depth, the height, the width, the breadth of God's love for them. Oftentimes we look at things we go through, things we encounter, and we allow those things to cloud to cloud our discernment of God's love for us. We, we, we look at things the enemy does and it distorts our reception of God's love for us. We allow external factors to blind us 
blind us from experiencing his internal love. That's a horrible mistake. That's a direct trick and attack of the enemy. Because if he can stop you from knowing how much God loves you, he can stop you from walking in the fullness of who God has ordained you to be because you won't really believe it. So for God so loved the world. See, let's focus on that for a moment. The world. He left no one out. The world includes you. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. Your sin will never be greater than his love. I don't care if you don't love yourself. He still loves you. His love is, is unsearchable. It's, it's beyond understanding. It's unconditional. That's why it's called agape. It's love. This just came to my spirit. Um, his love is so far beyond our understanding. I'm going to say something right here, and I hope you can hear it. Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus. And the message they sent to Jesus was, Lord, our brother Lazarus, whom you lovest, is sick. Our brother, your close friend, the one you really love, is sick. We need you to come see about him. We need you to come solve this problem. Because we know how much you love him. And Jesus, who truly did love Lazarus, he loved him so much, he let him die. Oh, I know I just lost some people right there. He loved Lazarus so much, he allowed him to die. He told his disciples he is dead, and I am glad for your sake to the intent that you might believe. The reason Jesus in his love let him die is because Jesus was getting ready to die. And he had to do one final miracle that was so great that people would not be able to deny that he was the true Messiah, the Lord, the Son of God. And when he was going to do his greatest earthly miracle to date, he chose to share that experience with the brother he loved greatly. See, and that's where we misunderstand the love of God. We say, oh, oh my God. Ooh, look what I just heard. Look what the Holy Ghost just said. He said, we think God loved his children the way a lot of us wrongly love our children. Allow me to elaborate. I say this new age parenting. Oh, I, I love my kids, so I would I would never tap their hand. I, I would I would never discipline them. I would never I would never whoop their backside because I love them too much. The Bible says, now I'm giving you Bible. The Bible says 
that ain't out of love for them. The Bible goes so far to use the word hate them. It says he experienced the wild hated the child. But let me make it in layman's terms so you can comprehend it. God says, when you spell the wild, let me make you play. When you withhold correction, however that correction may come. When you withhold correction and you withhold discipline, you're not doing it for the sake of your child. That's not out of love for your child. That's a selfish act for yourself because you don't want to feel some type of way or have your child to feel some type of way about you or towards you. You don't want because you want them to like you. You want them to be happy with you. You don't want to, oh, I don't want them to look at me like a, like a bad person or a mean person. I couldn't dare. But God says you care more about how it makes you feel today than you care about how they're going to be tomorrow. See, God's love, the way he's telling us to love, is to care more about how you set things for their future, the long term, than how it makes you feel emotionally in, in the short term. So, so, so where's where I'm going? God, Jesus, who loved Lazarus, says, I love him so much. You ready for this? I'm going to allow him to share in the residue of my glory. One of my greatest experiences, I'm going to share it with him. I could use anybody in the world, but I want the one I love to have this honor. Because people look at, oh, how could you love him? You let him die. Because I know that ain't where the story ends. See, y'all get so caught up on the moment of how it feels in the moment. You miss the bigger picture of how much greater it's going to be in the morning. Woo! Hey, you get caught up in the moment so much. You miss the joy that comes in the morning. It's not about the moment. It's about the morning. Because it'll be all over in the morning. Oh, my God. It says, it says he whom you love is just sick. When he raised Lazarus up from the dead four days after he was sick, Lazarus became the most famous man in the land. People came from miles around to see this testament of he who was dead four days rise again. Jesus' love so surpasses our earthly understanding. That's why he said all things work together for them that love God. We focus on the moment. God's focus on the morning. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Let me get through this. For God so loved the world. This is love, the entire world. Oh, my God, that he gave his only begotten son. In God's love, he let his own son die. He let Jesus suffer in that moment for what it would cause to happen in that morning. 
boy, I'm teaching better than you listening. That moment of the sufferings of this present world may last for a moment. They work it for us and for more exceeding eternal weight of glory. <laughs> Jesus agonized horrifically in that moment and knew that he would and embraced it because of what it would bring in the morning. God so loved the world, he sacrificed his only begotten son. Jesus paid that gruesome price so we that believe in him might have everlasting life. He went through all of that. So all we would have to do was believe. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Lord, you love me so much that you would die so I could live. There is no greater love than a man who would lay down his life for a friend. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died. We weren't even considered friends. While we were enemies, he died for us. He turned his enemy into his friend through his sacrifice. Oh my God, this is getting heavier and heavier. He loved me when I didn't love me. So oh, my heart so strong. There is no greater love. There is no greater love. There is no greater love. No greater love Jesus went to Calvary To save a wretch like you and me That's love That's love they hung him high, they stretched him wide. He bowed his head, for me he died. That's love, that's love. But you know what I'm glad about? That's not how the story ends. In three days, he rose again. That's love. That's love. That's not how the story ends. In three days, he rose again. That's love. That's love. <laughs> For God so loved you. He sacrificed his only son. If he died for us, the least we can do is live for him. And the church said, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I needed that reflection today. Through it all, he still loves us. 
He truly does. Okay, so let me remind you all again. Tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, Calvary Hawthorne at 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. We will be having foot washing service. If you've never been to a foot washing, come, it's going to bless your life. A foot washing, as we demonstrate true humility, following the example of Jesus Christ, our Lord, where I will also be explaining the significance because the foot washing is a physical demonstration of the posture God requires of us as his children. So I will be explaining that at 6.30 and we will be demonstrating it through the act of foot washing. Amen. At 7 o'clock, p.m. sharp. So foot washing will last 30 minutes, but immediately after at 7 o'clock, we will sayings. Our seven last saying service. And it's going to be a blessing, and that will be streamed live. So we will be streaming that live. Good Friday seven last sayings service. And don't forget on Sunday, 6 a.m., 6 a.m. service, sunrise service will be online only. Do not go to the church at 6 a.m. for sunrise service. It will be online only. But our 8 a.m. service will be in person. Our 10 a.m. service will be in person and stream. And on Resurrection Sunday, this Sunday, we will also add a 12 p.m. service <clears throat> in order to accommodate everyone. And our 12 p.m. service will be in person. It will not be streamed. The only service that will be streamed on Sunday is the 10 a.m. service. Amen. And while I'm announcing things, and that Sunday evening, if you watch American Idol, our own Roman Collins will be on again. You know, he got the golden ticket that threw with the auditions. Now they're in the actual competition. So let's tune in and watch that on Sunday. And also on Monday, we will be at Bethel Missionary Baptist Church that's located on Compton Avenue and 109th in the city of Watts. We will be there where American Idol will be filming uh, our worship, Roman singing. I'll minister a little bit. And uh, and they, as they do the backstory, and that will be aired. So you may be on television if you're there. That So don't wear anything with the name, brand, and the logo showing because TV purposes and advertisement purposes, they can't show that. So may God bless you. May God keep you. Thanks for joining us, Melvin Plays, Donnell Chestnut, Erica Gray, T.L. Thornton, Mike and Dolores Nicholas, Coach White, William Brown, Miss Catherine Duckworth, Miss Lawanda Mowo, Tracy Jones. Bless you, Miss Young, Lunda Johnson, Sharice Jackson, Miss Annie, God bless you, Bridget Boone Earl. Natanya Shackelford, Faye Walter, my sweet loving Sugar Doran Collins. Bless you, Sugar. Michelle McDonald, T.A. Renee. Oh, they don't see me on YouTube. Oh. Okay, I'm going to have to check into that and see what went wrong on YouTube. Thank you for letting me know. Bless you, Julie Lewis, Kathleen, Demetrius Edwards, Jeanette Grant. Bless you. Takesha Royal, London artist, Trenisha Moore, Star Bell, Patty Prasad, Tammy Mosley, Sharon Marshall, 
Sharice Jackson, Charles Earls, Nikki Holmes, Annette Simons, Beatrice Renee, T.F. Thornton, Kurt V. Gusto. Let me tell you how we do things here, Kurt V. Gusto. If you have a need like that, you need to email Cavalry at info at cbchawthorne.org. Info at cbchawthorne.org. You email Cavalry explaining your situation and give us a contact phone number for you. And someone will be contacting you to assess the needs. And we go from there. God bless you, brother. Bless you. Sister LaShanetta Tate. Latoya Jones. Amen, Tammy Mosley. And God bless you, everybody on my personal page. Or anybody that I can't see to see me. God bless you. Till the next time. That is my time. I got to go check this boy in the school. Peace.